Hello, welcome to the summit. Are y'all enjoying it so far? Yes? Ooh, good, good, good. Well, today I wanna talk to you about a figure that I'm very excited about, Frederick O'Neill. Now, I'm not a professor, I am a TikToker. And, <laughs> and I create videos on black history, so that's why I get to talk to you about this today. But before I do, I just have one rule for you to follow, okay? It's simple. Every single time that I say Frederick O'Neill succeeded, I want all of you to say, yes, he did, okay? I'm gonna make y'all talk today. I'm gonna make y'all talk. So whenever I say Frederick O'Neill succeeded, yes, yes he did. Oh, y'all are ready. Y'all are so ready. Okay, we're gonna practice two times, okay? When it came to learning how to walk as a baby, Frederick O'Neill succeeded. Yes, he did. Amen. Okay, I need y'all to have some oomph to it. We're gonna practice one more time. There's Frederick O'Neill. When it came to this photo, looking like LL Cool J, Frederick O'Neill succeeded. Yes, he did. Amen. Okay, let's get it started. So Frederick O'Neill was born in 1905, and he was named after Frederick Douglass. And he was born in Mississippi, but moved to St. Louis. And whenever he was 13, he began performing his own shows locally in his neighborhood at just 13 years old. So that's where his love of theater and performing started. And I have to do this. I know I just made y'all speak, but I have to because I'm also from St. Louis. Okay, okay. When it came from, when it came to coming from a city where countless performers and entertainers, including your girl Taylor Cassidy, came from, Frederick O'Neill succeeded. Yes, he did. Okay, okay. So, Frederick O'Neill began growing his career in St. Louis. He grew up and started booking roles, and he even started a theater group called the Ira Aldridge Players with a black union in St. Louis. And during this time, it would have been the 1920s to the 1930s, and there was something going on in New York, Harlem specifically. It was something called the Harlem Renaissance. Oh, do we know it? Do we know it? If we don't, that is okay. I'm here to tell you. The Harlem Renaissance was a time whenever black art was being put on display in the mainstream like never before. We got genres like jazz. We got people like Josephine Baker, who we just learned is also from St. Louis. And we got Zora Neale Hurston. And Zora Neale Hurston is also said to have put it in Frederick O'Neill's ear to move to New York City. And that's exactly what he did. When he was 30 years old, he decided to go to New York City and further his acting. Now, I want to put it into perspective for you. Imagine you spend your time in St. Louis building your career and building your career with your black identity involved. And you hear about the Harlem Renaissance, all of this art being celebrated. Imagine how excited you would be to go and join that. That would have been in Frederick O'Neill's mind. So he went, he got a day job, he studied acting privately at night, and he started booking roles. He started making his mark in theater. And he was also a part of a program called the New York Negro Unit of the Federal Theater Project. And that program was used to give resources to black actors and playwrights. So things were thriving, things were good. But all of a sudden, that program was disbanded. It went away. And those resources did too. And this was important because although it was the Harlem Renaissance and black art was being celebrated, it was still the pre-civil rights era. So discrimination and bias was heavy. And especially in the entertainment industry, don't even get me started about how black actors weren't protected legally and financially. And Frederick O'Neill knew this. So he took his past of leadership, creating a theater group, and his love of theater, and he combined it into one. So in a basement of a library in Harlem, he co-founded with playwright Abram Hill, the American Negro Theater. This is a plot point, y'all. American Negro Theater. And he created this theater to teach resources, skills, and give classes to black actors and playwrights to be able to make a living 
in their field. And listen, y'all, he really valued discipline. There were classes on dancing, singing, acting, stagecraft, everything. And I even read that if you were late to class, you had to pay a fine. Like, imagine going to singing class, right? And you're a little late because you wanted to get your Starbucks, you know. And Frederick O'Neill comes up to you and he's like, I need a dollar, dollar, dollar is what I need. Two dollars if you sing off key. Like, that's probably what he would have done. So I want to do something with y'all. It's a little exercise. Who's an actor in here? Oh, I see y'all. I see y'all. Okay, put your hands down. So I want you to repeat after me. And I'm going to say a sentence, but you have to repeat after me each time saying it the exact way that I do. We ready? Y'all ready? Okay. I don't want no scrub. I don't want no scrub. Y'all sound good. I don't want no scrub. I don't want no scrub. I don't want no scrub. Listen, I don't want no scrub. I don't want no scrub. Congratulations, y'all are actors. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yes. Okay, where are the Oscars at? I was told there'd be Oscars for everybody. No? Okay, that's okay. But this is an example of what might have been taught in classes. Did you notice how with each emphasis of a word, the sentence started to mean a different meaning? I just wanted to do that with y'all. But... The impact that American Negro Theater had on the theater world was amazing. He put on dozens of plays and shows by black playwrights. Even one of them, Anna Lucosta, went to Broadway and even went for a time in London. And fun fact, Frederick O'Neill actually played a part in that play. And to emphasize it more, some of the alumni that came from the American Negro Theater were, you know, some people like, Harry Belafonte, Sidney Poitier, Ruby D, Hilda Sims. So you can tell that this theater was a jumpstart for many iconic actors and playwrights to be able to succeed in the industry. Now, Ant or American Negro Theater shut down in 1951, but Frederick Duck, not Frederick Douglass, y'all. Ooh. That's his middle name. Frederick O'Neill never, ever stopped working for the well-being of actors. And he eventually became the first black man to be elected president of the Actors' Equity Association. So when it came to making a space for black playwrights and creatives to be able to thrive, Frederick O'Neill succeeded. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. All right. So remember that... All of this came from Frederick O'Neill starting when he was just a child, creating plays and shows just locally in his neighborhood. But that fire led him to changing an entire industry and starting the careers of many people that we know and love today. So that spark that y'all have, but you think it's just small, that could change everything. So I gotta go, but before I do, I wanna change the rule that I gave y'all. Instead of saying, yes, he did, right after I say my next sentence, instead I want y'all to say, yes, she did. Okay? Okay? When it came to giving the best 10-minute presentation (laughs) on Frederick O'Neill you have ever seen in your life, Taylor Cassidy succeeded. Yes, she did. Yes! Okay, thank you so much. Happy Black History Month. Black History is your history. Thank you so much.